Hi, I'm Nate. We're here in Claremont, Florida, just west of Orlando, and today we're gonna to be taking a look at the Purple Model 3. We're gonna look at how I installed the LED underbodies, all 400 of them, power supply used for it, and the Arduino that controls it. If you're ready, let's come take a look underneath the front. All right, before we get into taking out the, the tub, let's talk a little bit about how this all works. These are the LED strips that I use. These are the WS2812 individually controlled LEDs. Each LED will take the data that it needs and then pass the rest on to the following LEDs all the way down the chain. You got power, ground, and your center line is your data line. So it's directional. You have a data in, data out, onto the next LED, data in, data out, so on and so forth. To control all of this, we are using the ESP8266 Arduino. It has built-in Wi-Fi. Uh, data pins allow us to not only communicate to the LEDs, but also add extra functionality to it. So with that said, let's go ahead and remove these seven bolts, 10 millimeters, to get underneath the front tub. But first, we'll pop this up, remove the switch one two underneath the bag holders or two more grocery bag holders Also underneath the carpet, there is one on either side. And the last hidden one is underneath this piece. What we're gonna do is just pull up on it, panel pops. All of those come off with it. Set that off to the side. We're also gonna take off the clear, or the intake for clean air for the cabin. Take that off. The final hidden 10 millimeter is right here, right off of your windshield wiper fuel reservoir. Be careful with this one, you do not want to drop it inside. You will be able to get to it, but it's just not going to be easy. All right, so now that those seven bolts have been removed, what we're going to do is start up here. We're going to start working our way down. There's three clips along the side of the front. So this side is done. Let's get this side real quick. And there you have it. So what we're gonna do is currently right now, I have the Arduino stuffed up here where the cover is. So we're gonna make sure that that stays out of the way and secure. We're gonna tuck in the line that goes to the push button, make sure it's kind of out of the way. And then we're gonna lift the whole thing out. Just like so. All 
All right, let's start up here at the very top. This is where we're getting power from. It's directly from the 12 volt battery. Going through a fuse, of course. We come down and up here underneath where the front latch is at is the power supply for the LED underbodies. Let's take you around and give you a better look. All right, before we get any further, I'm gonna put out this disclaimer that this is a walkthrough, not a guide, not a how-to. I'm not responsible for any damage that goes to your vehicle when doing something like this. But if you'd like to learn or understand how I did that, follow along. So right here is the DC to DC converter. It's what converts the 12 volts to five volts at 60 amps. That then runs all of the underbody LEDs, the front bumper, fog lights, and side air vents. The underbody LEDs, uh, themselves from front to back is 150 LEDs per side giving us 300 LEDs and then the front bumper and fog lights and vents we've got another 100 LEDs those LEDs are a lot closer to each other say about a half inch where the ones on the underbody are about an inch uh, the front bumper is a little bit more dense um, we're going to show more light there so we added some more LEDs so what the 12 volt to 12 volt or 12 volt to 5 volt DC to DC converter, the one issue I ran into was when powering it up, the voltage slowly ramps up to 5 volts and doesn't jump directly to 5 volts. And with that, the LEDs themselves just did not like that. Um, half of them wouldn't turn on, half of them would be an odd color and wouldn't animate. So to correct that, I put in a 12 volt uh, time delay relay. What it allows me to do is set a dial here on the front that gives me anywhere between say zero and 60 seconds to turn something on. Once I give it power, it starts a timer. And at that point, once the timer is up, flips on and stays on. So with that, I was able to get the power supply to power up, stain itself at five volts, and then switch on the LEDs and everything was happy. We also have the Arduino up here. It's what's sending us through the green line, the data line to the front uh, underbodies. From there, we travel along the side of the vehicle. And before we get too far into it, coming out of the Arduino, we go to a sacrificial LED up here in the very front. Uh, this one's never seen, uh, but what it will do is kind of clean up the data line uh, as far as noise and um, whatever the LEDs, makes the LEDs a lot happier with the signal coming across. So what we do is there's one wire or a set of wires that go down to the front lower bumper. And right there is where we have it tied into the two LED strips. They're wide off. So technically we're only controlling about 200 of the 400 LEDs, but they're all mirrored from left side to right side of the vehicle. So we come in, we split off. We do the 150 down each side, giving us the 300 LEDs. From the back, we also ran a wire from the front here all the way to the back, so we can not only supply power to the back side of the LED strips, but also grab the data out to send it back up to the front. Grab that, it comes up to the front. We then again split the front bumper, uh, front vent up here in the very front, and we're gonna come in wide off again and that's where we're going to split and go across to the fog lights and then down to the air vents and then that'd be the end of the line the air vents on the bottom side is it there's nothing else that goes on past it um, but each led strip has its own little kind of home run from the input and output side to get back up here to not only grab power but pass the data lines across to the next led Let's come take a look inside on how we got power uh, to turn these on and off. All right, this is the power switch located underneath the dash. This is what turns on the LEDs for the outside of the vehicle, along with a toggle switch next to it that allows me to select between battery power and accessory power for the vehicle. With accessory, you can have it set up for not only a dash cam feature, like the black view up there, but also allows me to control the LEDs. So if I close the vehicle and nobody's in it, 
the lights will automatically turn off. What I also found is if you turn on your climate control from your Tesla app, this output also comes on, allowing you to control the LEDs remotely from anywhere in the world. How I got the power cable out here was I came through the rubber grommet on the steering shaft going out to underneath the front. Um, don't worry, it's completely tucked out of the way. It doesn't interfere with any operation of the vehicle. All right, now that we took a closer look at everything, let's put everything There you have it. That's a closer look at the LED underbodies underneath the purple Model 3 and on the front bumper. If you have any questions, leave them in the comments below. You can also hit me up on Twitter or Instagram. Just do a search for hashtag purple model 3 and you'll find me there. Once again, thank you and make sure you like, subscribe. And if you like the content, then maybe I'll start making videos again. It's been five plus years since I've made videos. Most of them were based on drone videos, on building custom made, uh, at home, uh, hexacopters, quadcopters. Uh, if you're interested, take a look at some of the other videos. If you're interested in more Purple Model 3 videos, let me know. Thank you, have a good day.